asking me if I give up. There's a few times that I felt that it might have been a good idea, but I said, a punch in the nose should solve things. Some of the fans were a little bit disappointed in me to get out of a legal hold with an illegal move. But we can't be concerned about what people think. The big thing here is they don't ask how you won, they ask if you won. And I had to get out of that bear hug, otherwise I was soon to be a bald-headed wrestler with no titles. Here Rip Rogers picks me up for a big body slam. And watch how he converts this ooh into a power slam. That brought back unpleasant memories to watch that. Here I am trying to get near the ropes, just in case Rip gets it into his mind again to go for the pin. There's a headbutt. Surprised me more than anything. So I decided to answer with a big kick to the midsection, go for a field goal. Well, it was more of a punt. And he answers that with a headbutt of his own. Now, when this match was over, my left eye was completely closed with several welts from a combination of headbutts and punches by Rip Rogers. There I managed to get some sort of onslaught going myself. The first part of this match was a battle of wrestling. Now it's turned into fisticuffs. And I employ the feet and the head as well. There's a very good kick, very well placed, which is amazing considered how haphazard and wild it was. None of these kicks and punches are measured. This is a wild affair. Here's where Rip Rogers gets a big advantage. It goes for that big vertical suplex, which he executed perfectly. Unfortunately, he's down himself, so he must have taken quite a jar himself there. Count of two. I got a little lazy. A blink of an eye and it's all over. There's a very good knee to the back of the head. I think it took its toll, so I tried it again. But once again, Rip Rogers is up before me. I'm still dazed from the cumulative effects of Rip Rogers' onslaught. There I get a, only a one count on that jackknife attempt. But at least it shows I'm still in the game, fighting away. My first legal move in a while. There's a punch right to the eye. And another headbutt. Rip Rogers has opened up a small cut right on my eyebrow. And that's what he's going for. Big double-fisted clobber right to the back. And a big elbow smash to the back of the neck. He employed that several times in this match. And there's my favorite move. Nice short punch right to the jaw. A couple of times there I thought I broke my knuckle, but I figured it had to be hurting his jaw pretty good, and if I got lucky, I'd knock him out. I go for my big flying monkey flip just to get him in the middle of the ring so I can try to get a pinfall myself. There I decided to punch him right in the nose. I've broken a few noses in my time. And I've broken a few jaws. Here's a big mistake I made. Big splash, and he puts his knees up. That's when I could have sworn I broke a rib. As it was, they were only bruised, which can hurt just as bad. I've had a few sleepless nights on account of those ribs ever since that. Viewing this film, I can see that Rip put his knees up just in time. 
And I was very afraid here that Rip's momentum would be such that he could gain a quick fall. And that would be goodbye hair and hello former championship. Count of two only. I'm a little the worse for wear. There I am trying to get to the ropes. That's always a good place to be when you're in trouble. Fortunately, Rip Rogers has already taken a severe enough beating. So I'm getting a chance to recuperate. Try to get myself together before the next major onslaught. Here I am crawling through the ropes. Watch this move. He slingshots me into the fence. Rip Rogers had wisely taken the opportunity to get himself behind the ropes. And then when I came for more punishment, he slingshotted me. And now my leg is caught, and the referee helps me there. It's a good thing he did because Rip Rogers could have really taken the action to me, and this would have been very bad timing for the old leaper. Here's Rip Rogers throwing my head into the fence. And I felt then like a rag doll, totally limp. But as Vince Lombardi professed, give that second effort. And that kick to the back of the head served to almost wake me up as much as anything. And then I said, never mind how things look. I knew I was close to the ropes. I was there on purpose, too. And Rip throws a forearm right to my Adam's apple, which served like a bucket of ice, getting me off my back. Now, that didn't help me. There was a very well-placed headbutt. As I said before, I can't tell whether it hit me in the eye or the temple, because I had welts in both places. There I am in the corner, trying to cover up, trying to protect myself. Rip Rogers is pushing me with his leg, but I'm pushing him too. So my overall battle plan is to try to defend myself, try to keep off my back. Rip Rogers has me on the defense, and he gives a knee drop right to my throat. Kind of one, one and seven eighths. So it looks like I'm starting to recuperate just a little. But now Rip Rogers has the abdominal stretch and aids that with a pulling of the trunks, which you can have a terrific view of right now. But I can't claim too many fouls because I was all over stretching that rule book myself. But in no disqualification match, it's amazing the match was this clean. There were no foreign objects. And I was proud of that. There's a punch to the midsection. I don't know how much steam I had left in those punches, but it was all I could do, and it was hard as I could. Now I felt like I had just a little momentum, so I decided to, his back was turned, I give that knee right to the back of the head. Now watch this move, I'm on the middle rope, and I stomp that head. There I knew I had a good thing going. Front flip, and a back flip body press. But in my excitement, I forgot to notice that his foot was perilously close to the ropes. There I'm picking Rip Rogers up. I go for the back body drop, but he gives me a boot right to the arm. Now the match can go either way. It's a matter of who's got more character. Conditioning really wasn't a factor. Even though we're lollygagging around the mat, it wasn't because we're out of breath. It's because of a punishment. Several near knockout punches. Cobwebs, cobwebs in both of our eyes. There's a headbutt, and those headbutts and those punches really took their toll on me. I can. I can verify that. There's a sidearm punch to the stomach, and I don't think it had that much steam behind it because I was a little bit shaken up. There I am, trying to get to my feet, 
so I can do some more damage and try to protect myself. Another headbutt. I believe Rip Rogers was giving himself a lot of punishment himself with each headbutt. So he switches his attack to an elbow right to my cranium. Here is a double reverse, and he flips me completely over. So I guess you could say he countered the counter's counter. No count. I was too close to the ropes. At this point of the match, my left eye was closed. Fortunately, I had my right eye. There, Rip Rogers throws me into the ropes, and I get a sunset flip, but a count of one and a half is all I could get, but at least I'm back in the game. I was very encouraged by that. I managed to react to his backdrop, and you could say that I tied the score because he reacted to mine with a kick. There's a good left right to the midsection and a big elbow smash, which sent me back on my knees, just like in church. He goes for a body slam, but I had enough presence of mind to go for a small package cradle, but the referee only counted two. Well, it didn't make it to two, but it was past one. Side headlock. Well, as I said before, my left eye was blinded, and I sent Rip Rogers into referee Jim Bunning. Jim Bunning is down, and that drop kick landed right on my jaw. Now, here's a bad break for Rip Rogers. Very unfortunate for him. He's got me covered, but the referee was out of it at that time. Of course, I didn't hear a count, and that, that meant... Uh, it really wasn't an emergency to get my shoulders off the mat. But there's a double chop, second one. It's got me back against the ropes. There's a very weak kick. And there I managed to get a little bit more muscle behind that one. Elbow smash to the back of the head. Referee Jim Bunning is still down. He took a terrible fall. Rip Rogers goes for the clothesline and I managed to get a sleeper. There I have a sleeper, that's my big hold. I know even though the referee is down. Here comes Pez Watley with the board. Pez Watley is trying to interfere in this match. And here comes Mike Dogendorf from behind, preventing and causing neutrality. Pez Watley goes after Mike Dogendorf with the board. George Weingroff, the promoter of the ICW, intervenes. Mike Dogendorf breaks the board over his knee. I go for a cradle and a schoolboy trip. And I am the winner of the Eye of the Tiger match. There was a lot of action right at the end. The crowd is smelling a haircut now. There I am in the middle of the ring. The crowd is pretty delirious. Twenty-six minutes, and I am declared the winner. Referee Jim Bunning, Mike Dogendorf, George Weingroff, the ring fills. And now everybody's getting in the mood for a haircut. And that's the last time you'll be seeing Rip's hair as such for many months. Pez Watley is complaining. We're gonna show you right now. 